Hey there, I'm Amy SZ and it's Fitness Business Find Out Friday. I'm back at my desk this week to answer a very common question, one that I hear all the time. And if you haven't asked it yet, you should because it's that important. What should your heart rate be when you're working out? What is the most efficient and safe zone for your heart rate to be in to get the most out of your exercise? Well now before I share with you a very quick and simple way to figure it out on your own, I want to emphasize that if you have a medical condition or are on medications that affect your heart rate, you should get permission from your doctor to begin a, a workout program, to begin exercising. But now if you're already in a program, if you already belong to a gym and have been exercising for a while but you're just not sure if you're doing it right, maybe you should talk with a trainer at your gym, ask if they offer free fitness assessments and they can do some cardio testing on you and let you know where your heart rate should be. But now to figure it out on your own, you can use the max heart rate method and all that is is taking the number 220 and subtract your age from that. So we'll use a 42 year old as an example. 220 minus 42 is 78. Or I'm sorry, 178. Uh, those of you who know me know that math is not my strong area. So 178 is that 42 year old's max heart rate. Now that you wouldn't want to be working in that for more than a minute or two. So if you're doing interval type training or anything high intensity like a spin class or running sprints, then you could be up to that max heart rate, but just for a short duration and then back down, a minute or two and back down. But for the kind of cardio that burns the most calories, the 30 to 60 minutes that you need to be doing continuously for five to six days a week, your heart rate does not need to be anywhere near that max heart rate. For a new exerciser, you want to stay between 65 and 75 percent. So for that 42 year old, that would be about 115 to 135 beats per minute. And now for uh, an experienced exerciser, you've been at it for a while, um, you want to take it up a notch, the zone 2 area is between 75 and 85 percent of your max heart rate. So again, using that 42 year old as an example, that would be about 135 to 150 beats per minute. And that would be continuous, you can keep that going for about 30 to 60 minutes. Now I say 30 to 60. I want you to promise me you, that you'll be do, you'll do that cardio for at least 30 minutes, and here's why. Our bodies take about 15 minutes to go through a process where we burn sugar before we start burning fat, before we start burning those fat calories. So if you're only running 15 or 20 minutes, you're really not going to burn very many calories, and you're not going to burn fat. So you want to stay at it for at least 30 to 60 minutes. If you're doing cardio only, then I suggest you go more towards the 60 minutes. But if you're going to do strength training, lifting weights, or taking a class, or um, even interval training, you would want to do that first. Get that out of the way, get your body already in that fat burning zone, and then do your cardio to get the most out of your exercise. So stay in the right zone and do it for the right amount of time, and you'll be good to go. So now that you know where you need to be, how do you monitor that? Well, there's two ways. If you're inside, if you're on a machine, if you're on a treadmill or an elliptical or something, then they have heart monitors, so you can just grab hold of the handles and check your heart rate. If you use the same machine all the time, you're going to get the most accurate results because that's, they're, they're all a little bit different. The one number that I want you to completely ignore, however, is the calorie counting. It does not know who you are. It doesn't know anything about you, that machine. And even if you put in your personal information, it's still an average. It's still a guess. So don't pay any attention to the calorie burning. But the heart rate monitors are accurate. The other way, if you're outdoors, you don't have anything to grab onto, um, or even if you're on a machine and you want to know how many calories you're burning along with the heart rate, then you can invest in um, a heart rate monitor. You can get the kind that goes around your chest and then you wear the wrist monitor, or you can just get the one that's just the wrist monitor. The chest ones are um, more accurate. You can get one from anywhere from $50 to $100 at a store like Walmart or Target. Or you can go higher end and get a Garmin or a Polar, and they have GPS in them as well, so you can be fancy. Um, either way, uh, they're all pretty accurate as long as you're using the chest monitor. That's my favorite way to, to do it. All right, so that's all I have for today. And so I'm hoping now that you'll take this information and work out more efficiently. Don't work harder, work smarter. So until next time and next subject, Amy SZ is out.